Hey, you there. Thank you for watching and welcome to Four Signs Forever. Today I have a 3v3 ladder match on the most wonderful, the most amazing Necroxis map generator. So let's go ahead and introduce our players, starting with blue team up here to the north and ending with red team down here in the south. Let's go start with the first player on blue team. It is a no-no 4k1. He's going first land as a Seraphim. To his east, we have Clab. He's going first land in royal blue as a Cybern. And last but not least, 14 1, we have Mambo going first land as a Seraphim as well in Amethyst purple. So for Team 1's racial makeup, we have two Seraphim and a Cybern, no UEF and no Aeon Tech. Down here in the south, for Team 2, we'll start with the Crimson, Chevy Crimson player of Brobury. He's going Bro B, not Brobury. He's going first land as a UEF. To his east in Ruby Red, we have Ferv going first land as a UEF as well. And last but not least, for Team 2, for Red Team, we have Strife. He's going first land in orange to color orange as an Aeon. So for Team 2's racial makeup, we have two UEF as the main land and one Aeon as the rear guard air slot. So on Team 1, they are missing Aeon and UEF. And on Team 2, they are missing Seraphim and Cybern. So it's pretty much which side of the, the racial makeup is going to win this battle, whether it be the Aeon and the UEF or the Seraphim and the Cybrans. Let's go ahead and look at amount of reclaim still currently on the map. We have 7,170. Not a huge chunk. A lot of it does reside in the corners of the map. I'd say about... Yeah, about a thousand fifteen hundred or so in this corner, and about let's say five, another fifteen hundred. So fifteen hundred in this corner, fifteen hundred in this corner. So about again three thousand roughly on each side of the map, with about another I'd say a couple thousand in the middle. So not super concentrated, and there is only three players, and so that will allow both teams to have a decent amount of mass points for both of them. The only really points of contention I see for mass points are going to be these over here and these over here. There's only one mass point on either side in the west and east lanes. And then, of course, in the mid lane, we have three, four, five, six on each side. So 12 in total in the middle. Everything else pretty much resides in Team 1 or Team 2's territory, respectively. So there won't be a whole lot of fighting over mexes early on. It'll be more... Building up an eco and building mass fabs and rascoms and of the of that kind of sort of thing. Let's go ahead and look what's going on. We have a transport. We're getting a bunch of flares loaded up. Where are they going? And you have two more slots. Put a, like an NG or two on them. But it looks like he's going to do full flare. He might be doing ghetto gunship right here. And so these are going to go to the front to help assist team two. We have already the comma ferv in that uh, middle kind of valley area of the map. It's not super sun uh, sunken down. You can see how high the cliffs are. Not really that tall. Get rid of that. We don't need that on the screen. And we are seeing a air scout going to night provide a nice view of what's going on in the enemy base with an interceptor to help assist in defense. And then the ghetto gunship. It's on its way. Where is it going to target first? What's well, going back into the main base here for Mambo, trying to slow down the enemy air uh, buildup. Interceptor notices the ghetto gunship, but there is an interceptor on its tail. The ghetto gunship will start to attack the Maxes, but it does look like the interceptor has done a lot of damage, dropped it into the yellow, has an anti-air gun nearby, is going after the ground units. Trying to slow down production there, but the interceptors have been dealt with. Well, no, there are still more appearing here for Strife. That gunship is still alive at uh, 200 hit points. They're trying to deal with it. The air units, not the air units, the flares have been dropped off. Fearing that the transport will die, and it dies off right then and there. The flares are targeting the P-Gens. They've taken out four of them so far. And that will be the end of that. So it got none of the mexes, but it did take out a couple of units and some PGens. So is it really worth it? Uh, I don't know. I don't think it was worth it or not. It did kind of have a nice early aggression, though. There are a couple of civilian structures here in the northwest and the southeast. Not really any defenses to speak of. So just a couple of groups of mass to scoop up. 
Here we have Team 2 splitting the Mexes. We have Borobi getting the Western and Ferb getting the Eastern. Neither team has really built up any defenses or, you know, PD or whatever. Not even factories yet. They're just kind of taking it a little bit slow, which is nothing wrong with that. You got to, you know, take the game a little slow, especially when you have a 3v3 at about maybe at least 12 kilometer, you know, length and width. So it's a pretty decent map size for only six players. So there's a lot of room to, you know, spread out, you know, stretch your legs, that kind of thing. And what's going to be a lot harder for these players is because there's only three on each team, there's a long, you know, attack range that the enemy has to, you know, move across the field. You have the small little alleyway here. You have the big, of course, western uh, r lane. You have two lanes to attack with in the middle. And then, of course, the same thing here on the east. So it's going to be a lot for players to manage. And it does look like most of the mexes for Team 2 are going for Ferv and for Broby just to ensure they have enough mass to pump out for land units. They each have an intel installation to ensure they have a nice field of view, or at least field of intel, on what's going on on the western and eastern lanes. Nothing in the middle. You could have put one maybe like right here, and how to hit it in that little recess to get a nice little view on the enemy. But we have a nice group of units here from Mamba to the west. Nothing really here. There is a couple of units. But the combo will make the biggest difference. There are a couple of AA guns in there as well. So Mambo getting a nice group of units. And he's the land player. Sorry, the air player for Team 1. And he's pumping out land quite heavily. We'll see how that affects the makeup here early on. Both comms on the eastern side just kind of walking around. We have the comm of Strife going for maybe a distance build down here into the uh, valley area. But the attack order has been given along this eastern side they're going to start grouping up here on this western ridge of the little plateau that has like nothing on it probably could put a couple of shields and AA and uh, artillery and stuff like that here which would be a good place to put that because it's very hard to get to uh, T1 already could probably just shoot at it from a distance but you know it would take a couple of uh Moments of APM to deal with that, and if there's a lot of shields and NGs and stuff, would be kind of annoying to deal with. Gun speed and range has been finished there for Ferv and sorry for Clab, and Ferv has started T2. Sensors starting here for Strife wants to get a nice view of the map. Other games we have seen how wide range that Aeon sensor package is. It's a lot of it's a lot of vision. So uh, for those of you who haven't seen it, when this gets close to about 90 or so percent, I will switch over to him specifically. But the comm is going to lead that attack. He's being very cautious over here on the western side. Doesn't want to push. We could have even had the comm of Clab come in and assist with his units and just take the middle from Team 2. But they're just inching forward slowly. They don't want to fully commit. They don't want to be far out and not being able to retreat. Okay, so the sensor package is at 80% while we have the combat going here to the west. That is the vision at which they can see. And it's about to finish, and you can see the circle range. And then once it finishes, that's the range you can see has a huge amount of vision on that comm. The three, the three mass extractors are down here for Broby. going to actually start building them, or actually replacing them, I should say, for himself. Because T1 mass extractors take about 45 seconds to repay itself. I think it's 45 seconds. I can't remember. Anyway, yeah, it's less than a minute for sure. And as long as he holds those for a minute, it won't really matter. But uh, he will spend some mass, will not finish those three, and is now going to be surrounded by units here from Broby. His units are out of position to the east, dealing with these units. And comes here for Fur, Fur building some triads to help assist in defense. We have a T2 gunship, a Spectre, on approach. Now the forces here from Clamp are coming to assist. Mambo has taken a decent amount of damage into the yellow. And there is a gunship on its way. There is some AA nearby. It's going to take a while for just that one solitary gunship to chew through those hit points on Mambo. But the calm of Strife is on its way with just the sensor package. ASF deal with that gunship. Nano upgrade going down. About to finish here for Broby. He probably will bring that to the front as well. Intercept is coming and intercept the gunship. That was a dad joke there. Apologies for those of you who I made cringe when I said that. 
Uh, we have units falling back here to the east, not wanting to gauge this large group of units in the middle. And there's even a group of units here to the west here for Nono. And Nono could push this quite heavily. There's, you know, they have to deal with some incursions to the west. The units are falling back, not in position. Maybe they'll just charge the main base of Broby and take out his calm fairly early. We are only at 10 minutes with 3v3, only six players on the map. And having a player die before 20 minutes would be kind of brutal at this stage in the game. But uh, if you've seen the video length uh, before you clicked on it, you saw it, this video was over an hour. So we got a lot of time for these players to duke it out. There's not a lot of support here for Broby. He does have the Zephamp and Nano Repair of 50 hit points a second, so it's going to be very chunky for these Thams, and there should be some Zui in here. There's a couple Zui in there to chew through that combo, especially with reinforcements here coming from the west. Mambo sends his forces in, decides to just build those mexes once again. Gun range going down here for Strife. Wants to get a nice attack range on that comm while Ferb builds up some defenses. Does get an anti-air flak cannon online. I love that, showing he can deny some air for his opponent. Against his opponent, not for his opponent. And then a couple of triads to help deny T1 advancements. All those units for Mambo have retreated to the comm. The comm deciding to stick with them just to ensure their safety. But tactical missile has been started for Ferv, and it's already at 60%. This is not going to look good. Will he build the Billy Nuke? It is expensive at 11 minutes to build the Billy Nuke. Usually players will build this one first, kind of wait 5 or 10 minutes, and then build the Billy Nuke. So we'll see if he starts to use it. And if the calm of Mambo stays still and in range, this could be an early kill here for him. That's the range of his missile. That's a lot of range. That's, I'd, I'd say, comfortably at least 70% of the map. Uh, 65. I'll say 65. That's a lot of range on that com on that comms missile. So Team 1's got to be aware of that. We have a run-by opportunity here for Team 1 from Clab. He's pushing these units in on the east. And there's not really a lot to defend this, so these mexes are under threat. They can run. They just need to just cut all the way down to that eastern side. And there's T2 mexes under threat as well. A couple of NGs are, are taking those up as we speak. They could spam out some T1 point defense, but I don't think it's really going to matter if they don't do something quick. More and more units are running in to come assist. They have some mongeese rapid fire Gatling guns on those bots, but they are pretty weak up close. They are really hard to micro because of that, and you can see just Mantis is chew through the hit points on that uh, on that mongoose. And now, you know, Medusa artillery lands takes a lot of its hit points. You can see they are effective; they do a lot of damage, but they're just super weak. At this point, you might as well just build pillars because these pillars can tank a lot of the damage. Builds one plasma cannon, but they're just making their way along that eastern edge. And a lot of this will peter out, but they will probably get all of these NGs here. The thing is, is will they build the T1 Plasma Cannon in time? It's going to be close. NG's trying to build them up as fast as they can. That one gets online. Luckily, the gunship helping assisting as well. So maybe these units here from Collab will get maybe one T2 Mass Extractor. Maybe even not. No. I don't think they've lost this Mass Extractor here this one here so only two mass extractors for all of that uh micro and apm on the eastern side for collab not really worth it honestly knows that team two is building up some mongies but that's it but now we have restorers t3 has been achieved for strife and he is gonna s not skip asf but focus heavily on restorers very i wouldn't say op but very powerful t3 gunships the best in the game we have the calm of no no Trying to cut off any movement on the western side. Actually cutting it off entirely except for a little bit of gap. So his couple inches can come around and reclaim still. And just mess with the uh, pathing for his enemy units. But missiles raining in all the time. Trying to take out the calm. Mambo is forced to keep moving to avoid those missiles. Might as well attack units that aren't moving. Or structures whether that be some mass points or even the calm of collab back here. He's building some flak as we speak. But we have restorers on the scene. Going after the comm of Mambo, he is very far ahead in terms of running to a nearby friendly base with a shield at least. There is some AA here. 
it will take a while to chew through those hit points on a restore for T1AA. But uh, we have some more interceptors on the way here from Clab. And, and maybe they'll take one of them out, but it's not going to be enough, honestly. Especially with ASF and interceptors here for him as well. Kill him, please, says no, no. Kill, says no, no. <laughs> but uh, maybe you don't kill him because your opponent wants you to kill him. Because the thing is, is that as a full share, I think this is a full share game. Uh, all of the resources, all of the structures, everything goes to another player. So it just supercharges that player for a while. And uh, do it, it's not really the best idea to just kill outright. There is a griffin flying with those interceptors. There's a lightning tank here. The Uyana. I think it's Uyana. These, these restorers are actually going into the back line targeting T2 mexes that are exposed. I love that move denying the eco here for Team 1. Especially because they just need to reduce enemy eco. And Team 2 is leading by, you know, just a decent amount. But when I say decent amount, it keeps hovering between, you know, 10 or so. But Team 1 gets a huge boost at 330 now versus 280. And with the loss of two mexes, it start to take a toll. There are lightning tanks and interceptors on approach. The AA gunships, these restorers, will probably take out one more... T2 max if they stay in range long enough. Uh, nope, that one gets out and that one takes out. So three T2 maxes were taken out uh, and also delaying the time that they get upgraded. It's trying to make it out of there, but it won't. It gets lightning to death, unfortunately, for it. Team 2 has now reclaimed the middle of the map and now the missiles are being launched, hopefully at the maxes and not at the units because those missiles are not worth just taking out units it looks like it's going for i mean it's still pretty high in the air maybe it's going for the t2 mexes here that would be my guess let's see if we can see we can't see exactly where it's going but it's going to land take out this one kills everything except the mass storage now we have nono going to be thinking about building up some tmd but a second missile launches fairly quickly right after that this one's on an upgrade it loses all of that mass if the if the next missile targets this one it's going to deny it. Oh, it does build T3, so all those hit points will help assist it in staving off any incoming missiles. A third one gets launched. So, Eco Sniping is Team 2's game here. Takes out some NGs and another T2 mass extractor. So, man, it's starting to hurt. We got another missile to the north. Takes out that one. We'll take out the next one. Man, Team 1 is just suffering in the Eco game now. They've dropped below 300, and now Team 2 is in the 300s. Actually, 350 to be exact. And how much total mass have they accrued? Well, Team 2 is leaning by about 5 mass, 5,000 mass. And so it's not that absurd of a lead, especially at 17 minutes. That's not that crazy. I love the placement of the radar installation to the east. I feel like it's a little bit out of position. should be probably behind the shield. I understand you want it as close to the front line as possible, but we have a bunch of Mantis going after these Strikers. Strikers not really positioned well to deal with this incoming threat because a lot of them are just can't fire because uh, of the line that they are in position of. But we do have a Percival here. Would probably like to see some Titans, which I hardly say because Percivals are just, you know, stronger. They deal a lot more damage, at least single fire. But dealing with T1 units, you really want to deal with Titans because they have rapid fire. They don't overkill a lot. And so that would be a lot better. And they just move faster in general. So you're able to get them to the front lines a lot quicker. And they're cheaper, too. We have a column of Percivals on their way, though. So if you have that many, it might not even matter. Units here for either side on the western side for No-No. They're actually going to get sealed off. So these units are going to be stuck here on the southern side of that wall. Building the wall is No-No's game. Must be a fan of uh, a U.S. president. We have Broby retreating to the main base here for Strife. Strife getting an air grid up and running. Has a couple, looks like easy, not mass storage, just some mass fabs in there as well. Though it looks like he's doing kind of a combo hybrid air grid with mass fab just to kind of speed up uh, mass costs and mass generation. Because if you adjacent next to a mass producing structure with a facility, it reduces the mass cost of whatever you're building. Which is why you see a lot of players, you know, put their headquarters or something usually early on next to a mass extractor to help assist in that game. You can even see the line of adjacency with the little dots. It just helps 
assist in generating units faster because it costs less. Especially when you don't have a whole lot to use early on in the game. Team two, sorry, team one has all players almost at over 100 mass a second. Nono at 200, while team two has everyone over 100 with Ferv leading at 172. Rass being built here for Nona wants to increase his own uh, comms generation metrics. Negative 74 mass a second. It is really expensive to build Rass. And then uh, augmented Rass, the A Rass, is even more expensive, but does generate even more mass and energy. So, you know, that is the uh, trade off. That um, That's artillery. There's these clink cameras going after this. Firebase here for Clap. Clap doesn't really have anything to clap back with. Just has AA and TAC missile la defenses, not launchers. And he's just going to sit here and take it. This large T1 force is just going to sit here and just get pummeled. He does have some rhinos in there as well. But since Team 2's player Ferv has Mongeese, which he should have some pillars too, and a bunch of Percivals, it's going to be very hard to crack this eastern position. Nothing's happening on the west side. There's even more walls being built than this little, you know, alleyway flanking maneuver. So this engineer's like, I can't, I, I can't help, <laughs> I can't get around <laughs> assistance. And so the they just can't get around to uh, build those other lines. T2 back here for Strife. He's going for T3 as we speak, getting the Omni. And the Omni will pretty much cover the entire map considering how small it is. T2 is going to be completed here for Mambo, getting more hit points on the comm and starting to build air staging facilities, as well as the ARAS going down here for No-No with assistance from a couple of engineers. It is very expensive, you know, 58 negative mass a second with every assisting engineer and the comm really drains your, um, your eco. But once you got it, you got a bunch of mass, 33 mass a second which to put in perspective is more than a T3 mass extractor or fully ringed, about six more mass a second more. So very valuable, but um, you don't want to be aggressive with that comm because you don't really have a lot of hit points. You only have 13,000. Because a lot of other upgrades for Seraphim comms can get very tanky very quickly. So it's more of a defensive slash support comm versus an offensive comm. Units here to the east, I don't know where they're going. But uh, they've just been given an order to go east, and maybe just for protection or something. I don't know. They're all T1, so I'm not going to do a whole lot. How's the ASF game going on for both of our players? Well, Mambo is the rear guard air slot here for Team 1. He's at 16 ASF. Strife has to have a lot more than that. He has 21. Does he have any more restorers? No, it doesn't look like he's going for more restorers. Which is kind of weird because he was building them early and then stopped. Mm. You know, so it's kind of been a lull period here, very quiet on the, uh, in, I was going to say the eastern front, but all the fronts. You have a small attack base here, this forward operating base. There's no shield. Probably need to build that back up. And just, just building this thing up and up needs at least another shield. Maybe go T3 here just to assist. And these are named Julia and November. <laughs> Maybe this one would be named, uh, I don't know. Another word in the uh, military alphabet, maybe um, alpha or zebra or something, or x-ray, that's a good one. Which is Clab just kind of sitting here, not really doing a whole lot. He has T3, he's building up some of his mass extractors, but I don't really see any effort from either team to really launch a four scale assault. We're at 23 minutes, no comm has died yet. Can we make it to 30 minutes? I would assume so. The calm of Brobery is actually in the water. His head, oh, his head is actually sticking out of the water. Just barely, you can see the, you can see the line of the water just right, right in his mouth. So he's just drinking a bunch of water while he sits there, contemplates what he wants to do with his units. Small group of units for him on the west. But uh, the issue with these titans, these titans, these triads, is because of the way that they're positioned on the plateau. They can't do any damage to units. It would have been better to put them right here, but uh, didn't didn't notice that, I guess, or didn't want to. But he's launching artillery at the main group of units over here to the east. Takes out a group of mantises. Team 1 not really doing much of anything. I'm surprised no one started to build a chicken. 
Building an SMD here for Nona wants to be protected from any nuke strikes. Airgrid in the back wants to, you know, get as far back from the enemy as possible. There's no... there. The monkey has been started. I would assume the Cybermen would build it first. Maybe, the, you know, sometimes people build the chicken first. But the monkey is the cheapest experimental, of course. It is very powerful, very up close, but it just, it just lacks in the range department. Aras going here for Strife wants to get his eco up and running as well. And what's, and what's funny is that even though he's building his Aras, he's still generating more mass than when he's, you know, requiring to build it. So he's still positive. Eight, uh, eight mass a second negative for each of these engineers will help speed up that process, of course. And then let's see what he generates per second compared to Nono. He, well, he generates 37, so he generates even more mass than Nono with the ARAS. But we have an engagement here to the north. A bunch of Percy's and T1 units engaged. There's a lot more units for Team 1. There are some bricks in here as well. Cerberus turrets, very effective at taking out T1 units. These units here from Ferb will retreat back to this main base, this forward operating base. The comm has left. I don't know why. He's just retreating. Looks like he might have got dropped off too. But uh, we have more Percy's to the front with assisting shields. Love that combo. Spider 50% says Strife. Yeah, th wow, that's already a, that's really quick at 50% already. Team 1 has actually skyrocketed in an eco game at almost 1,000 mass a second versus 850. That's starting to not look good for Team 2. And now Team 1 has caught up and gained the lead in the total mass accrued at 20 ma 20,000 mass ahead that's about as much as a chicken's worth all right chicken a monkey's worth do we have any other movements oh that's just that's it just the monkey is the threat here the monkey might struggle taking out this base if there were more ravager no more if there were ravagers or even more artillery it would be a difficult ask there is a decent group of percy's here there is 18 Percy's. That's a lot of alpha damage. They, if most of those can get a shot onto that monkey, a lot of its hit points will fall fairly quickly. I just don't see any moves from Team 2 to really, like, do something else other than what their opponents are currently doing. Fat Boy being built here. One Fat Boy isn't that much of a concern. Three Fat Boys is very much a concern. But just building mass fabs, it's, it's kind of a slow match. But I hope you guys appreciate all of the little analysis I'm doing with, like, mass costs and what they're building, why they're building it, when they're building it. And so just trying to diversify the um, the cast a little bit because sometimes it's just action, 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 which is fun to watch, of course. But it's also kind of cool to be like, why are they doing the moves that they're doing? You know, should I be doing that if uh, some of my viewers do play the game? Because I don't feel like every viewer that watches the content, you know, from Guile, from willow from duelist plays the game uh or you know continues to play the game they probably play the game at one time but they're like oh yeah i should probably do that or you know oh that's a you know oh i've been doing that wrong i should do it this way and then you know that kind of thing so one of the reasons i love doing these casts is because i learn a lot from just just talking about the game let alone watching it commenting about it giving my two cents about it now mambo has built RAS and will now go for advanced nano. Actually, that's that's nano repair. That's well, he has RAS on his left gun, left arm, and now he's going advanced nano repair. That's a lot of hit points to have on that com. A large army here to the east even has some vipers, has some bricks, has a bunch of stuff. I hear fire going on. There's a group of titans to the west. Looks like the Othams came in to assault this position. Didn't really take out anything. Took out a shield generator, but that's about it but they'll scoop up the mass from those Othams nonetheless. This is the main point of contention here for Team 1. They want to take out this long line of units and, you know, fire base. The shield is still down. Maybe it's just off. I feel like Ferv has the energy. Oh, no, he does not. Okay, never mind. I thought he had... He's even disabled his Omni. Yeah, you got to build some P-Gens. You're building a fat boy at the current time you're building pigeons as well just stop the production of the, the fat boy just for a second finish the pigeon and then you'll have enough power for everything spy plane mission going on over the top here for team two getting a read out what's going on chickens are now the name of the game here for mambo 
chickens here for Nono as well. He building, he's just building the nuke, uh, the anti-nuke. Crab, about 33% of the way here for Clab. So if he has a, a crab and a monkey, this position is going to hurt fairly quickly. A couple of tanks are pushed forward just to deal with these roaming bands of engineers. I do like that move, so instead of sending the whole army, just send a couple of tanks. Because the engineers can't fight back. Unless they reclaim. They're not combat engineers, the Sparkies from uh, UBF. But that fat boy will finish here pretty much at the same time that this Pigeon will finish. It's at 99%. This is at... Well, it's done, and that done very quickly. So let's see how's for power situation going on. Well, it's still having an issue. Oh, oh, there it goes. Okay, it corrected itself now. So now he'll be uh, generating more mass because if you're stalling energy, you can't produce as much mass. You're actually losing mass out if you don't have energy. So I'm going to watch out. There is a chicken patrolling. These group of walls were control K just to allow the chicken to probably move around, but kind of slow. I mean, we're 30 minutes in. We're ha pretty much halfway through the game now. No one's died. Not a lot of plays have been happening. There was that one attempt here from Mambo, I think it was. Well, it wasn't, no, it was No No, I think it was from. No, uh, no, I think it was from Mambo. And that was when uh, Nono was like, kill him, please. And Team 2's like, nope. Air grid being built out once again. Now we're going to see the Rascoms being brought in. An eye is going to be built here, give them a nice lot of vision here on their opponents. Another fat boy built fairly quickly, already in the yellow, already over 30%, 33% completed. As an SMD here, going to build another shield, build another shield to protect it. I love the the kind of design of the shield layout to ensure that this one is pretty much covered by all three shields. So if one shield falls, it still has coverage by two more. I love that. You need a bigger air grid, but says Ferv, well, you know, you always need more air grids. Answer to if you have enough ASFs is no, you need more ASFs, and that means more air grids. The way I'm sitting in my chair, my foot was falling asleep, so I had to adjust myself. Um, and sometimes I sit on my feet, and while I'm just, you know, playing games, watching a show or whatever, or casting, and so, like, I just don't notice it until I start to feel the, you know, like, oh, where'd my foot go? Because, you, you know, you lose... Uh, nerve connections because you're losing the oxygen to that part of the foot because you're cutting off circulation so it's just like uh <laughs> where did my foot go but uh i readjusted so my foot starting to reconnect all of its nerves it wasn't that bad it's not like it was completely asleep so because sometimes i feel like a lot of people have experiences where like when you're in your arm or your leg is completely numb because you you know laid on it wrong or whatever and it's just like all those nerves are coming back online. It's just like, ah, it, it doesn't like hurt. It just is just, um, I guess hurt would be, uh, I don't know if it was hurt. It's just, they're all coming back online and it just, the sensors are coming back. It just hurts, I guess would be the way that I put it. Anyway, ignore my ramblings. A lot of forces for team one are starting to group around these main bases. I wouldn't be surprised if team one launches an attack at some point. ASFs, are given a call to the west. I don't know what's going on. Do they just have more? Mumbo's going for a full K, going at a kill, coming after those T1 bombers. Not really worth it. He has 112 versus Strife's 134. So, you know, Strife has the advantage. There are some, you know, flak sites. There's TMD all over the place. There's also some SAM sites starting to appear. Very slow buildup. Very slow build up. I, I don't like those games sometimes because it's just kind of boring to watch and kind of skip through it a little bit. But uh, eventually it just kicks off and then it doesn't stop. So some games you'll just, you know, step on the gas and never stop. And then there's just a slow build up and then they'll hit a certain point in the game and it'll just, like you kick the hornet's nest and it's just going to go wild. Two chickens to the west here for No No. One here for Mambo down the middle. Going to go for this base here. There's really nothing to defend against it. So. Team 2's got to mount some sort of attack. That's probably why these ASFs are sitting here, just to assist in defense. There's not a lot of gunships here. There's not a lot of artillery. It's only here on this eastern side, and that's where Team 2 is weak, is they're not putting a lot more effort here to the west, which they could have. They're just not choosing to. The pings go down to the chicken. The chicken opens up. We'll take out three T3P gens. Some of them are fully ringed. 
The engineers and other units are retreating. Burberry has built another experimental unit. It's a, another Fat Boy. So Team 2 now has access to three Fat Boys. Yeah, one, two, three Fat Boys. The chicken takes out those. Oh, you're not going to get the last one? Okay, there it goes. Oh, no. Oh, okay, you're going to move forward and get it. Okay, I was like, why not go for it? Now going to go to the east, take out these other mass points. Taking out four so far, two more left in the middle. A couple of tanks actually make their way, take out all of these. And now Overcharge, Overcharge, and Neo is what they're named. The crab is pushing forward here to the the southeast. It's going southeast, I should say, but doesn't want to fully commit just yet. Spy plane missions go out. They'll see everything going on back and wait for what there's a collab. There's really nothing here for Team 2 to fight against this chicken. There is a couple of Percy's, but that's really about it. It's all, all this is doing is giving Team 2 time to build up, get their fat boys in position and all of that. It's, it's just very much like you got to commit at some point, and it's not, it's not really going well for Team 1 because they, ha they have the forces for an attack. They just don't want to use it. And now they're just giving free damage against these units for Team 2, you know, not a lot of hit points are gone, but you let them sit there for a while, and they'll, they'll die. The chickens are falling back. What did you ping, says Broby, but it was the chicken that fell back. The SACUs are pushing forward, are going there. They're going to just die sh straight out. Like, they're not going to survive that encounter. There's a bunch of Percy's there. Are they building? No, just b -gens. I don't know. I mean, you would figure that somebody on either team has built a nuke. Or built an artillery or built something, but neither of them have built anything to really end the game here yet. It is 35 minutes. you got to be thinking about that. The Colossus is under construction. It's in the green, so over 75%. There are a couple of gunships being built here for Strife. Another Fat Boy. I hear a Fat Boy fire going off. Units here are still in range. They have to retreat. Now there's just free damage again. None of these units on Team 1 or just want to commit. The only aggressive part of Team 1's play so far was Mambo, and he retreated, and Team 2's like, nah, it's fine. We'll just let him live. ASF just kind of flying around. What is the plan, says Clab? Like, yeah, what is the plan? And uh, Team 1, you got to come up with a plan. Team 2's got to come. Neither team has a plan to win. They just have a plan to just stall at this point. But the Fat Boys will push forward, taking out a bunch of Team 1 and T2 units. Team 3 is going to take a little bit. But, again, there's there's not even another crab or monkey under construction. The crab's going to go it alone. Oh, this is... they got to fall back. The crab will take out these Fat Boys fairly quickly. Fire opens up on the crab. It'll be a while before all the hit points are taken out. It's very slow. You have, you have 11,000... you have 11,000... 110,000 hit points. And now they're like, oh crap, we're too close. The crab opens up. This could be the the point of attack here for Team 1. Percy's are called forth. There's a lot of Percy's here. That That's a lot of Percy's. 36. Oh, those are Titans. I uh, know those are, those, are, those are Percy's. And there's Titans over here to the east. The Titans and the Percy's are pushing forward, dealing with units. One of the Fat Boys does get away. The Percy's are targeting the crab as well as any units coming at it. A chicken comes in from the west. Two chickens come in from the west. This is a pencil maneuver here for Team 1. This is going to hurt a lot. ASF coming to assist, but there's just so many units here for Team 1 that it's target saturation here for all these Percy's, which is high fire damage. And high fire single fire damage. And so now the Fat Boys are opening up on the Monkey Lord. Spectre gunships taking out the chicken as we speak. ASF going to target the gunships. The gunships fall back. ASF fight starts to kind of ensue. Both players don't really want to fully commit. But the chickens are pushing forward against this fire base here. Juliet, November, and Golf, that was the one that was named, will be taken out. The monkey is almost gone. All those Percy's are gone. The only thing left here in units here for Team 2 are the Fat Boys. There is a Colossus en route. ASF still, it's kind of hard to tell. It looks like it's favoring maybe Strife, but then it does, doesn't look like it. The chicken gets in range of the Colossus' eye beam. Even the secondary guns on the Fat Boy open up. That's how close the chicken is. They've taken out... Oh, no, the monkey got away with less than 1,000 hit points. Wow, that was lucky. The second chicken will fall. The first chicken will fall. 
And so now there's two experimentals here on the east. The ASF fight does go Team 1's way. They will have air control. But uh, there's a bunch of AA coverage to the west. AA coverage starting to migrate to the east as well. And it's just... No, that did not go as well as Team 1 thought it would. Nuke says no, no. Yep, the nuke has finished. Firepoint is the plan. Don't... Okay. I get it. You want to build the nuke as fast as you can. Not T3 uh, mass, extra mass fabricators. Do T2 and then do a bunch of shields. That is... You're, you're asking that thing to blow up. Just one, one... If one of those mass fabricators explodes, everything's gone. So just... No. They're not a good idea. <laughs> Not a good idea. I know you want to reduce the amount of you know, mass it costs to build the nuke, but it's just not a not a good idea. The eco wars for Team One are they in the lead? They were at two point two and then it dropped. Are they having power issues? No, they all have a bunch of power. Well, I mean, Clab is struggling a little bit, but not by much. I don't know why. Maybe it's a reclaim base thing, possibly. But the Titans here to the east are taking out a bunch of. T3 mass extractors is do count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. And now, you know, 3, 6, seven, 10 of them so far. That's a decent chunk of mass. These Titans are going to not make it out of there. They will die, but they did a lot of service for their team. And that's, that's the power of Percy, not Percy's, of Titans. They move fast. They take stuff out. T2 now under threat as well. They take out another mass extractor. They get it. Digging out mass storage as well. Not that that really tired the matters. Take out a radar. It's only T1 at this stage. Not really that important. But uh, that's actually the only radar on the eastern side. So eh, maybe. The last Titan will die. So the main fight here to the east has gone Team 1's way. But now Team 2 have come back with a bunch of fat boys. They have the two that they had earlier. The one from the west. And now two more have appeared. We have five here. That's a lot of artillery fire. We're starting to get critical mass of fat boys. Even more engineers are on these T2 star lifters. Would like to see some uh, continentals, but they are a little bit expensive. They also have a shield on board, so it makes production more easier. Lots of spy planes over the top, getting a nice view of Team 2's base. Two of the three comms are on the southern portion of the map with the last comm of Fur building a Novax with a bunch of Ravagers. Having some tele snipe protection. Already says no, no. Yep, there is an Arty. It's in the green at 75%. Does Team 1 have an answer to that? Uh, quantum gateways, bunch of mass fab farms, more mass fab farms, air grid in the back. That'd be a prime target. Building shields to cover their st their energy production facilities. I don't really see an answer to this. We have Rascoms being built with a bunch of hives. So... Not really anything to counter that. Team 2 is looking good. They have a nuke and an arty almost. They actually have an arty done going for a second one. More shields, more shields, more shields, more shields. We were just waiting till someone disconnects. <laughs> uh, that would be um, very disappointing at 41 minutes if someone just disconnected. Especially because not really a whole lot has gone on. But the fat boys will start to just push on Team 1. All these T2 mobile air cannons will start to evaporate with this incoming pressure. Lyndon B. Johnson. <laughs> well, I didn't mention a U.S. president earlier. And they're building Titans. You hardly see this in FAF. They're building units. I gotta take a picture of this. You hardly see this. Look at this. That is that is something you never see. Build another one. Just just build another one. Now they're building flak. And I love love to see it. Love to see that the the function of the Fat Boy is being built. What they're you know halfway designed to do. They're mobile factories. They produce I think twice as fast as regular T3 facilities. Still cost mass of course to build. And I don't think they can build on the go. Well, I think they actually can. I think it's slower to build on the go though. You can see a little bar. No, maybe not. No, maybe it only costs. Oh, maybe it only costs energy i don't think it costs mass that's actually very worth it no i think that's no that's for the shield that's not for the the unit it's kind of, kind of hard to tell hmm, let me see let me click on let's say let's say ferv and go to yeah i mean you can build units i just don't see the i don't see the cost on it you should see the cost on it which is really weird anyway i love to see that 
Fat Boy's building units on the go. I would build... Oh, my. Oh, my. These are Rambo preset commanders with two chickens on approach. These Fat Boys have to push back. So while Team 2 is pushing the eastern side, Team 1 is pushing the southern... Well, the western side. And there is really nothing to defend against this push. There is one Fat Boy. They're probably going to go straight for that arty. And there's not really a whole lot of defense. Where are the gunships? Where Where is everything? Where's the T1 bombers? The F Fat Boy has opened up. They're building SAM sites. This is one was building at the time. One Fat Boy has been called to the west. This one's going to move and probably go after that Fat Boy. All those units are falling back to help assist with main base defenses. They have the AOE overcharge explosion. Not overcharge explosions. The overcharge ability on those Rambo comms. So lots of damage. Percy's opening up. This is a huge fight going on on the western side. First time Team 1's really engaging the main base. Except that very early on engagement. Lots of hit points on each of these commanders. They have 20,000 shield plus almost 30,000. So we're talking about 50,000 hit points. And to give an expect the experimental assault bot, the chicken has 67,000. Of course, a lot more damage on those chickens, but uh, still powerful nonetheless. Percy's trying to do their best. You gotta target the weaker one first. You want the AOE explosions from the deaths of those Rascoms. A bunch of Ravagers open up. Spectre gunships targeting the Rascoms. You should be targeting the, t the chicken first. That's the biggest threat here. We have a bunch of lightning tanks in the back taking out air units. The first chicken falls just outside of a shield. That will probably, you know, cascade, explosion, at least a couple of facilities. This P-Gen will be taken out. Miasma, fire opening up. You can see the AOE uh, effect. That's a lot of lightning tanks. That's a lot of lightning tanks. How many lightning tanks are there, actually? 30. That's that's a lot of AA. And, they're, yeah, they're going straight for They're taking out a SMD. They're going to take out some facilities. The second emissary is only about halfway done. Production has stopped, it looks like. Yep, they have T1 teledefense built in. They're going for the nuke. The nuke hasn't even built the nuke. The nuke launcher hasn't built the nuke yet. And they're building, oh, this is oh, this is so disappointing. You gotta build defenses. This is a huge cut. Takes out that huge facility for mass fabs. So you don't want the mass fabs. Oh, and there's transports that try to come in and assist and they get wiped out by the lightning tanks. This is, oh, this is going to hurt. Oh, the, the Colossus gets built, though. This will help a lot in defense. That, la that laser will take a while to chew through all of those comms. But all the lightning tanks taking out all the gunships as they're built. Oh, this is just hurting all these ram ra Rambo preset commanders. They are producing two mass a second. though. But they take out the Colossus from all of that overcharge. Oh, no. This is a big old gunship's. Ah, uh, <laughs> says Broby. They left a lot. They left a lot of that base for him in the northern section of that main base. There's still more commanders. Now they're targeting the shields around the artillery. I don't think they'll get through the shields though. There's a lot of T1 PD just spamming shots out as fast as they can. Lots of hit points just being eviscerated. They've split. They've gone across. They've taken out some of the air grid. They take out most of the air grid with all that volatile explosion. Go for this mass fab farm right here. That'd be a nice little target. Another one dies. All oh, those blow up. That's a lot of mass gone. Oh wow, that's man. This just look at the hole. Look at the hole in Team 2's base. And now we have a force to the east pushing that advantage with two crabs. Team One is just again. I you know I made that comment like once it kicks off, it will kick off, and it has kicked off. But I don't think they really have anything reserved for Team One. This is their last push. If they don't win with this, it's going to be a while before we see anything else. There's two crabs, one severely hurt, one of them half dead or half alive. Pick to pick. Percy's being thrown at the enemy to just reduce all those hit points. Air grids falling apart. There was a Duke built here as well. That will die. Air facility, T3 air factory goes down. It was the headquarters. The Fat Boy still being built. Ravagers should be the priority. The crab standing on top of Ravagers, not the best place to be. It'll actually crush those Ravagers as it dies, though, so it's not a huge concern. Bricks still making their way across the field, taking out AA emplacements, taking out... There's an SMD that they could target. The second crab falls. That last of the RASCOM... Actually, RASCOMs. The Rambo preset commanders gets taken out. 
This would be a nice target to take out. Take out that last SMD. Team 2 has one SMD remaining. Actually, there's one over here as well. I think that was just built. But this push to the east, not as effective as the one from the west, but still a lot of infrastructure was taken out. There is, that's a lot of fat boys. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven fat boys. And they're always producing units, it looks like. So that is going to help Team 2 recoup some losses with the fence, is push, you know, pumping out a lot of T2, T3 units. There's <laughs> those turrets that were built a long time ago still gets a kill. It's called Killer. How many units has it killed? Six? That's not, that's not bad for T1PD. But look at, all the, look at all the Rascom explosions. The air grid is gone. There isn't a secondary air grid, so Team 2, all they have is the air that they have currently. Is there a counter RD? No, there are a couple of Novaxes doing what they can. Shields all around everything now. I don't see any nuke launchers. I don't see any artillery. You should be building artillery at this point just to counter the enemy one at this point. Or a YOLO or something. There's only one shield protecting all of these mass fabs and shield and P gems, but there are some NGs assisting it. Emissary shot to do a decent chunk to those shields. They're trying to pump out as many experimentals as they can is what Team 1's goal is. Team 2, even though they've lost a lot of the mass, they're still in the lead by 200 mass a second. So it goes to show how much mass a second they were producing. When you have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 fat boys, a lot of mass. I don't like the positioning of the SMD in between the two Novaxes. It's just a juicy target for them to target. A target for them to target. Um, I'd rather have the SMD somewhere else. They didn't take out the Omni, which I mean, that wasn't the goal. The goal was to take out the Nuke and the Artie, which they couldn't get to. Another push to the west with two chickens, two more in the back with some shields. Still a decent amount of lightning tanks, but uh, not as much as the first push. Now there's a bunch of Percy's here. Fat Boy here as well. Actually, that's number nine Fat Boy. So Fat Boy's galore. It's like I would say, what would you do for a Klonak bar? But in case they sit the Fat Boy. By the way, Fat Boy's really good ice cream sandwich. Highly recommend. They're not like fancy, fancy. It's just, you know, a decent chunk of vanilla ice cream with a couple of pieces of, you know, ice cream cookie. But still, they're really good. They're a lot easier to eat the Klonak bar. Then Klondike Bars, because Klondike Bars, once you crack the initial shell, then it's just like a race against time before <laughs> it like goes everywhere. The the ice, the fat boy, you can eat slower, which I appreciate. The chicken falls over here. Colossus will walk right next to the Ion Storm. The second shot, the chicken falls. The third one will fall fairly quickly. The Ion Storm hates, hates Colossus for some reason. These Ravagers, most of these will be taken out. I think even the Pigeons might suffer some of that uh, wrath. But the Ion Storm not focusing the Colossus. All those chickens were taken out. That's essentially, they took out a, a fat boy, but that's essentially just a mass dump. Another chicken, but the Colossus is still alive and well. Ravagers are the spam of the day. The Colossus is fairly hurt. It's in the red, does have a rank of veterans. The Ion Storm is targeting it, but the chicken is targeting the Ravagers, unfortunately, and this one will fall. I think the Ion Storm will eventually kill off that Colossus. But still, there's another one on its way. Rascoms are just spammed up as fast as they can. A second emissary has been finished. A third one is already half of the way there. Now Team 2 has mounted a counterattack with 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 fat boys all producing units as we speak. This one says S. Grover Cleveland. <laughs> John Tyler. <laughs> it's just naming U.S. presidents at this point. I do like that naming mod. It's pretty funny thinking of like a Lyndon B. Johnson as a fat boy pumping out a bunch of artillery damage. GG well plates his clab. Well, I mean, 50 minutes in, it's not the end of the world. You have seven fat boys to deal with. But if you have a bunch of T2 already, that's you know a nice counter there. But uh, the engineering facility here that's producing all these crabs are starting to be withered away. There's also Titans in here. They're targeting the comm of clab. This will be the first comm kill at 50 minutes. 50 minutes is the first comm kill of the game. Lab is the first one to eject by a bunch of artillery and titan fire. And now Percy's are pushing forward as well to the west. That uh, 
rat that uh, mass fab facility was eventually taken out. The game is now a three v two in favor of team two. Again, I think the f I think fifty minutes is the longest I've seen a game without a death. Like that's a lot. There are two chickens trying to just assault. There's Bernie Sanders in there as well. Um, trying to assault these fat boys. There's just too much fire. And there's also a Novax over the top. Air says, Ferv, yeah, they're only lacking air. That's how Team 1 can combat this. Come back at this and combat this. Both both those sentences work. But man, this is just a huge threat here. Even, I'd say, more of a threat than those chicken and Rascom push. I mean, I mean not Rascom, uh... Rambo preset commander push just because there's so much artillery fire and there's so many ground units like all of that fire look at how many hit points are just gone in a couple of seconds with all those Percy's and know Percy's move slower and they don't have overcharge but man they fire a lot of damage targeting that uh, volatile explosion from that pigeon deals a couple of hit points damage to the crab Artillery fire opens up. That shield will fall. Crab will be protected. It'll go down. Probably kill this Pigeon as well. Yep, takes it out. Takes the shield out. Another shield. Another Pigeon under threat. They're just carving a path in any and every direction. Chicken's trying to do something. They get pretty close to one of the Fat Boys. John Tyler under threat. It will survive. Bernie Sanders protects it. Will John Tyler survive? John Tyler will not survive. That's got to hurt. Sorry for the peek there. Bernie Sanders tried to take the hit for him, but it just wasn't enough. Ion Storms will be annoying for Team 2 to deal with. Another chicken from a flanking maneuver. It's just it's not enough. Not enough firepower. Maybe you kill one of the fat boys, which is what you want. Bernie Sanders under threat. We'll get Bernie Sanders, though, for sure. But an Awasha over the top takes out a shield and pretty much an entire fat boy on its own. So Team 1 has an experimental bomber, and they're building them right here. Looks like the lasers are going after the AA defenses. Titans are on approach, taking out engineers as fast as they can. There's a couple of Percy's in there as well. It does take a minute to chew through T3 engineers, though. But uh, reducing the amount of build power is definitely a tactic. The air grid under threat in the north. I love how the air facility, the main air facility, the HQ, is in the middle of everything. But the downside is it's cor it's flanked by a bunch of PGNs. But there's that huge toe. Broberry has lost. It. Well, he's not Broberry. Glab has his entire base is just gone. But another Alwasha bomb takes out a decent amount of Percy's, but it will die because of that, assisting the Cougar as well. I think they're producing. Titans and I think Cougars as well. You should be producing Cougars. They have Percy's on their back as well. But again, first time in a long time I've seen that to great effect. ASF fight once again. There's not a lot of AA support from the ground here from Ferv. But Ferv, we have ASFs coming in from Broby as well. Will this be able to turn the tide? ASFs are falling back. They want them to engage over the SAM sites. Or, sorry, the T3 anti-air defense sites. Apologies. Another experimental bomber is built. Uh, it's not the best positioning there, but it does get out just barely. Crabs trying to do what they can, but thousands of hit points are being lost every second. Not a whole lot they can do about it. Game gets paused and resume. The air sucker <laughs> give me air says no no. But uh, artillery landing, taking out the air grid. Now they're targeting the comm of Momo directly. They're trying to build shields around him as fast as they can. But more and more artillery are just raining in. They're going for a Huffatham themselves. They're trying to build sheen emplacements, but they just get taken out as quickly as they get built. The um, long, not the, the, the second pulse of explosion from the emissary are very effective. ASF's four team two have been eliminated, and now the Awasa can just deal with the Fat Boys. It impacts the shield, takes out some of the hit points, takes out a bunch of those ground units. Rover Cleveland is under threat. The Cougar trying to do what it can. These fat boys should be producing Cougars as fast and as quickly as they can. Unfortunately for Team 1, those fat boys are mostly in Team 2's territory. And just, There is a decent amount of mass there for Team 1 to scoop up. How much mass is currently on the field? 
Three hundred and nineteen thousand. Okay, not an absurd amount. A lot of it is pretty much right here. But that one crab will fall. Another crab gets in range of a fat boy. Lyndon B. Johnson, you're going to die. Oh, it wasn't assassinated like his uh, partner was in the U.S. presidential... uh doesn't say debate, but um, his, his president, when he was vice president, was assassinated. I'm trying to make a John F. Kennedy joke. A reference. Not a joke, a reference, but uh, kind of didn't really work. But... Percy's are pushing forward against the crabs and it looks like the Percy's if you okay target this crab so you can kill it off and then target the last crab because uh even though at not a lot of hit points still does a lot of damage I heard an explosion go off Rascoms looks like they teleported in and took out those three artillery installations there's a czar over the top this shield just immediately collapses Oh, it was the Awash. That's probably what it was. And there was Rascoms in there. But a nuke gets launched here from Team 2. The Kuzar goes down. Crash Lance takes out a mass extractor. Where is that nuke? It's going against Team 1. They have a SMD loaded. They don't have to worry about it. The Awash are coming in again. There's a second one. Now Team 1 is fighting back. Where is the AA? Like, you should have known... You know, five minutes ago, there's AA. Well, I guess there's AA on the front. It's not going to be enough, though. You need layered defenses. It drops it into the red. It's not enough. The bomb will go off, taking out the air grid once again. And that's just a, that's just an oversight there. Need more, need more AA. More AA built, taking out that. I'll wash it. The Maver. I didn't even know that was. Oh, oh, it's going to overshoot. But the Maver is still alive. We'll take out. A couple of mass fat form, not mass fat, but ringed T3 mexes. The Maver, is it done? It looks like it's, oh, there it goes. Okay, I was like, uh, is it done? But it's finished. The Maver is completed. I haven't seen one completed in a while. That's going to be a nice little screenshot there. <laughs> looks like, it's like, hi, guys. Um, there's, a, there's, a, there's a bomber on top of me. Assistance, uh, guys. Uh, I need some help here. <laughs> so no one over here. Nice little screenshot there. I gotta get the screenshots once in a while. Nice little um, thumbnail potential there. But now, Team One knows the Arty is online. At least they should know. There's even there's two more down here. How much Arty was built while I was like talking about the the land game? Dang. But now it's targeting the production facility for the Awashes, taking out a huge number of engineers lasers over the top targeting probably i would probably target the the p gens would be my point but they're going to land again take out even more experiment experiments is more engineers another all washer has been built my favorite air unit of the game Just tell me you're not going to go after all the okay you're not okay at least go after the t3 mass extractors that would be my thing but another arnie shell will land They'll take out what it was building. They have to restart the build again. Another Arty Shovel Land takes out another P-Gen. The la laser's focusing on the P-Gens, taking out the enemy's ability to produce energy, which means they can't funnel energy into shields, which means the shields will just collapse. But the Maver Shell's doing lots of damage, of course. This one lands. Kaboom takes out another shield emplacement. The shields around Mambo are down. Mambo's got to leave. They're building T3 shields as we speak, but I don't think it's going to be enough. The Maver might just kill them off. The shell will impact. Will it get online? The shield gets online. Oh, that was close. That was very close for Mambo. But now this is the threat here for Team two, for Team 1. There's three already. The, this one's almost built. And, of course, the Maver. Two Novaxes, a couple of fat boys. There are more crabs pushing up the middle. There's two fat boys trying to defer them as much as they can. Another one back here going to be called to the front line. There's a nuke here, but that's not going to go anywhere as long as Team 1 has SMD. The comms of at least Burberry are shielded. Strive is not. Strife, not Strive. Strife. Oh, you're targeting? Why? 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 Why are you targeting that? Why? Please explain. Please explain why you're targeting T1 units. That, that's just insult to injury at that point. One of the crabs falls. Another nuke has been finished. Where is this one launching? Is it going to be uh, tactical base defense? But the SMD has gone down. 
and all of the engineers know it. They're like, we are out of here. Uh, Mambo is just not protected at all. He's building just shields as best he can. Emissary just pummeling at those shield capacities. Two emissary, not two emissaries, two Awashes are on the eastern side. They're going to try to go after the Novaks. You need more shielding. Ferv knows it. He's moving away. ASFs are trying to intercept. At least take out one of them. There's some flak trying to do what they can. Awash is coming in over the top. Going to hit the shield. Not going to penetrate it. But the wall, the crash damage, kill it off. No, it misses it just barely. The second bomb comes in. Takes out the Maver. Oh, that's going to hurt. But there's still those emissaries online. It's not over yet for Team 1. And it looks like the Awasher will be killed. It won't be killed off screen. They're going to drop against those emissaries. Crash damage. Doesn't really do a whole lot. We'll take out one shield, two in shield emplacements, but that is it. Those are three experimentals on top of just this position here. And whole, that is pretty much all that Team 1 has. Artillery still raining in. They killed the Maver, but they did not kill the other emissaries. And now they're just targeting whatever they can. Calm of Mambo trying to just build power fast he can. He does, you know, how is his power situation going? Well, he's struggling a lot. No, no. Uh, he has a decent amount of power left. But still another push with a couple of fat boys to the east. Still producing units. They will not stop producing units. They have an infinite order on them. There's another experimental bomber to the north. This match really kicked off. Once that push to the east happened, it was pretty much just full action all the time. Bunch of Medusa on approach. Awash are going to be called to just take out this force. There's a decent amount of cougars in the mix. We'll take out a section of those Percy's. Impact on the shield of the Fat Boy. We'll just tank that. Again, the Fat Boys, they need more AA coverage, whether that's ASF or ground based. Where are the emissaries now being thrown? But they're being thrown to the west. After the calm of No No, I would assume the lasers are targeting the calm of no 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 just taking it is not even trying to move the emissaries will impact fairly close they won't do any damage to him but fairly close takes out a AA emplacement laser still trying to do what it can it's going for this group of t3 mexes and mass fabs they already just can't seem to get a shot on him they're targeting the shield itself to trying to deny him shield capacity will impact the shield. They'll take out the shield. The shield emitter is gone. Mass fabs are gone. No, no's like, I don't have any shield anymore. And the next one closest to him is this one. We well, won't make it that long. The only way he will survive is if the Artie keeps missing it. But three more shots come in. Ah, they still can't hit the uh, comm directly. Awasha over the top. Takes out the shield for the fat boy. Fat boy in full retreat. There's two of them, so there's a lot of uh, bomber potential, but no, no, just trying to survive. He's re he's recovering 240 hit points a second. That comm is super tanky. He won't survive indefinitely, but he can survive a lot. The ASFs are just charging after that bomber. You're going to lose a lot of your ASF there, Broberry, and he knows it. Broby, not Broberry. I keep doing that. And uh, it won't really matter. Shields are actually assisting now. No, 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 no will survive that for now. He was almost assassinated by satellites, but his super beefed up regen is what's saving him. 240 hit points a second. Look at them just fly up. That's a, that's a lot of hit points a second. Bombers are in approach, taking out the fat boys. Both of them, Harry S. Truman and Ulysses S. Grant. Harry Truman survives, but he won't survive for long. And now it's pretty much... Bomber in Artillery Wars. There's a couple of Percy's that made it into the back lane targeting T3 mixes and shields. Medusa are just pummeling them as much as they can. The Novak, Novax, the Maver is already half health once again. There's not a lot of shields. There is a little bit of overlapping shields from the Emissary shields, but not a whole lot of coverage. Alma Ferv has moved, has moved to here with a couple of assisting engineers. It's still a 3v2. The first death was at 50 minutes about for, uh, yeah, at 50 minutes, about 15 minutes ago. And the satellites are called off. They're not going to get the comm. Not really worth their endeavors. There are now three Awashes on the field. They could go after those those emissaries. 
the ASF will get a nice little attack run on these bombers. There's a lot of AA covered still. The, MSA, the ASF will not be able to kill them off. Not the MSA. The ASF will not be able to kill off the Awashes off, but uh, will at least do some damage. There's another emissary here to the west. So now we have four already online. The fifth one, the Maver, being built once again. It's in the green. You need more shields. Prioritize shield coverage just a little bit. The, all those, you have three Awashes on the field. It's That's kind of dangerous, all of that bomber capacity. There's a lot of AA coverage to the west. Not a whole lot. Oh, well, I guess there's a lot more on the east now. But, uh, oh, there's a lot more. Wow. So those bombers, they're coming in from the west trying to get a nice attack run. But there's more layered defenses on those uh, AA emplacements. There's not any back here. But ASFs are calling in from two players, from Broby and from Strife. They're targeting the lead Awasher. They take out some of that air grid for Broby. The first bomber goes down. The second bomber will go down here shortly. Doesn't really impact anything. Maybe it was going after the nuke launcher, but it has one nuke loaded. Won't be using that quite yet. There's one SMB in the back. It's not even bomb, but the calm of no no decides to control K, sensing the game is pretty much over. Emissaries are now targeting the calm of Mambo. Strategic one impacts the sh the nuke will be launched. And there's no SMB to protect him. And he might actually just die to artillery fire right here. He will just control K knowing the game is over. One was going to impact him directly. And that is the game. Team 2 wins. None of their players died. It's a flawless victory. Thank you so much for watching. I apologize for the game being a little bit slow in the beginning. But man, did it kick off. We had that push here to the east by some bad boys at the same time. The push from the west from... Ram Rambo support commanders and chickens that got all the way into the back line and all the way across. You can see like all how all of them died. And you know, take out a nuke. They took out the Maver. The Maver was all actually was built again, just barely. You know, you had three emissaries down here. Where were they? Three emissaries down here that were taken out. Another one was built over here. Three more were built over here. Team one was like, I'm gonna build experimentals, no arty. I mean they could have built the YOLO. They could have built a Scathis. Like, they had time to build it. They just didn't decide to. And I feel like that was their their linchpin. There was That was their fault was, oh, we'll just build a bunch of bombers. We'll build a bunch of crabs and just shove it at the enemy. And that works early on. But later on, when you have lines and lines of AA and you have a bunch of ways to fight off the crabs, that that's it. That's your plan of attack and it fails. You have to adapt. But again, thank you so much for watching. I greatly appreciate it. We even had some Colossus over here to the east just dealing with the front lines. But again, thank you so much for watching. Please like and comment down below what your favorite moment was. I'd love to hear from all of y'all. If you have a replay you want to recommend, if you have any comments about my casting ability, video, audio, whatever the case may be, please let me know. And again, thank you to everyone for making it to the end of this decently long video. I thank every single one of you. Thank you. And I will see all of you wonderful people, amazing people, beautiful people, and handsome in the next one.